Hi, this is Mike Bull. I've been putting out a few videos about how the angles to the sun and moon don't seem to align with the standard heliocentric model of our world. A lot of people have told me that they can't quite get their heads around what I'm trying to show them. What you talking about, Willis? A lot of other people have offered rebuttals to the earlier videos. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. My plan now is to take it from the beginning so at least everyone's on the same page. During the series, I will also address the rebuttals, including the ones that came in the form of videos from Globe Believers. Okay, the basic premise is very simple. If you have three circles all centered on a horizontal line, then you cannot draw another straight line from the top of one through the middle of another and have it also go through the middle of the third, like this. And at the top of this one, if I move it to the center of this one, it's not going to go through the center of the third one. And we do it this way. If I put this on the top of this one, and drop it to the, through the center of that one, like so, it's not also going to go through the center of the closer one. So what's that got to do with the heliocentric model? This is the alignment during new moon. We have the earth here, we have the moon directly between the earth and the sun. They're all on the same line actually it's a plane you'll have to think of this as you know a plane coming straight out towards you and going beyond them into the wall they're all aligned on the same plane during new moon so imagine this is the south pole okay so that would make the earth spinning this way like so, it's rotating around. Okay, so you are on the equator, and on the equator, you are standing up like so, and you're looking this way towards the east, and if you get far enough around, you'll see the sunrise in your eyes, okay? So that's how you are on your ball there. All right, so now this is your horizon. As you're spinning around on the earth, getting towards the sunrise, you cannot see any of this uh, level at all. You cannot see any of it. You can only see your view right now is everything above it. You're looking up at stars. You're looking at the stars, you can see everything above it. You cannot see the level itself or anything below it because that is your ground. That's your horizon right there. You can't see beyond it. This is the Terminator line. This is all daylight. This whole side of the earth is dark. Okay, so the sun will light half of the ball equally, no matter the 23.4 degree tilt or what season it is, no matter when or where, the sun is always lighting exactly half of the ball, okay? So now you're coming around, remember you can't see anything below this top ledge here. So as you're coming around, let me move it up here a little bit, you're spinning around on your earth all right, you get, okay, so I don't know if you can see it, you could get right to the Terminator line there. Now, let me drop, look at the, the middle bubble here. Right there is horizontal, okay? As in horizon. Here, let me get it, I'm gonna just slide it up so it's right on the top of your earth there. So you're standing there on the earth, you cannot see anything below this line. You can see just out here and everything above it. You can see the sky. That's it, okay? When you get to horizontal, you can't see the sun. 
at all. You can only see above this line. You definitely can't see the moon. All right. So that's the first one I wanted to address. And before you even get to how you can't see the sun and moon together, when you are looking at your horizon, you wouldn't be able to see the sun because it's in the center. It's aligned with the center of this ball. It's not aligned with the top of the ball. The sun's not up here. When you're, when you got the terminator line right here, the sun is aligned with the center of the earth, lighting half of the ball. The sun's got to be directly down the middle. A guy called Jerry BC one recently uploaded this video as a rebuttal and Dazzle the cameraman mirrored it and heaped praise on Jerry for doing such a brilliant job. Here's what Jerry says in his video. So if we go back and look at the model that Mr. Try and Survive and Mike Ball use in their experiment, we now know Mr. Tellurium just looks due east to see the sunrise. He does not look down to see the sunrise. That's bullshit. He does not look down to see the moon. That's bullshit. So what we have it's Mr. Stellarium just looking at the horizon at sunrise to see the sun. And the thing is, it only takes two seconds to debunk this silliness. Yeah, but did you notice how Jerry debunked our silliness in two seconds? Yep, he just moved the sun up so that it's no longer aligned with the earth and the moon. He didn't consider poor Stellarium dude on the bottom of the earth, who's supposed to be watching the sun set at this same moment, did he? In fact, what Jerry has done here is reiterate the very first point I made in my very first angles video back in February. Actually, there are a lot of things wrong here. First, we must accept the absurd notion that a person at the top or bottom of this earth could see either the sun or the moon around this ball when their field of view could only be horizontal, as in horizon. So this is the first problem I pointed out back in February and Jerry was able to refute my silliness in two seconds by simply moving the sun up here. Hmm. Now to be fair, Jerry did offer another point of rebuttal, but I'll deal with that in an upcoming video. For now, I just want to point out that we couldn't even see the sun rise from the Terminator line by looking due east along our horizon without moving the sun out of position like Jerry did. And if we move it up so that the guy with the blue horizon can see it rise like Jerry did, it makes it even more impossible for the person with the red horizon to see it set at the same time, right? And doesn't the heliocentric model allow for one person on one part of the earth to see the sun rise as a person on the opposite side sees it set? Well, fortunately, a different Mike asked that question back in 2014. Is it possible to observe the sun from opposite sides of the earth at the same moment? And the question was answered by a fellow named Nick Loam. Before we see the answer, let's see who Nick Loam is. Nick Loam was curator of astronomy at the Sydney Observatory for over 30 years. He continues to work as a consultant astronomer, and he authors the Australian Sky Guide, which is published annually. He's also written several books on astronomy. So suffice it to say that Nick Loam knows a little bit about the heliocentric model. So let's see how he answered Mike's question. Nick says, yes, we can, and we do not even have to climb mountains or go up in an aircraft to do so. And then he tells a story about Bill and Sydney and Jane on a cruise ship at the anti-Sydney, the antipoda Sydney. All right, and he goes into, you can, I'll leave a link so you can read the whole thing. He, now, this is important. He is talking geometrically here, geometrically. Okay, but at the, around the time of sunset in Sydney and sunrise at anti Sydney, there will be a time when Bill and Jane will both see half of the sun above the horizon, though different halves. Now, he points out sunrise and sunset are defined as when the top edge either rises above or dis disappears below the horizon. So we can then say that as Jane sees the sun rise at anti Sydney, Bill still sees the whole sun with its bottom edge touching the horizon. As Bill starts to see that sun actually set behind the horizon, 
Jane will start to see the sun rise in Auntie Sydney. All right, so I, there'll, there'll come a point when Bill is seeing half of the sun uh, as it sets, while Jane sees the other half of the sun while it rises for her. Okay, so he goes into a few angles and degrees here. Uh, but he basically works out, we can work it out that it will take the sun approximately two minutes to set in Sydney after it rises in anti-Sydney. Bill and Jane thus have two minutes while they can gaze at the sun simultaneously from their opposite sides of the earth. Okay, now remember, this is geometrically that two people on opposite sides of the earth can both see the sun, the same sun, simultaneously for two minutes. Okay, he then goes on to talk about refraction. He adds refraction to the equation and comes up with adding refraction. They can see the sun simultaneously for nine minutes. Okay, so like I said, you can read the whole thing if you want. The important thing is, even geometrically, no refraction involved at all. Bill and Jane can simultaneously gaze at the sun for two minutes from their opposite sides of the earth. And I'm telling you that this is 100% unequivocally, geometrically, as impossible as these blue and red horizontal lines ever intersecting that sun, which is on its own separate but parallel horizontal line. And since the refraction rescue device has been dismissed before it's even appealed to, there's only one other appeal ball earthers can make. Oh, and before you start getting carried away and saying, well, no dummy, the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, idiot, stuff like that. Let me explain two things. Let's make your sun just huge, okay? There's your sun. Like all the little illustrations on Google show, when they show Earth, Moon, and Sun, they always got this huge sun sitting there. All right, ask yourself, first of all, with that big old sun, how does that little moon ever pull off a total eclipse of the sun? How can that little dude completely black out that huge thing? All right, that's the first problem. All right, second, one of the points I'm going to be trying to drive home is as this guy is coming around, my point is going to be you will always see the sun first before you see the moon because the sun is farther away. It's common sense. It's basic geometry. And so as I'm coming by and I draw the line through the middle of the sun, well, He's seeing half of the sun right now, the guy that's standing on the Terminator line. He's seeing half of the sun. He can't see the moon at all. And by the time he gets spun around enough to see halfway, half of the moon above the horizon, half of it below his horizon, well, the sun's already up in the sky. Actually, it's 3.22 sun diameters up in the sky. So now, you want me to put a huge old sun up here? Well, that just hurts your cause. Because now, dude, is seeing the sun, he's starting to see the sun over here, and it's going to be hours before he sees the moon. And the point is that in the heliocentric model, experts say in new moon alignment, sun, moon, earth, all in a direct syzygy, they call it a syzygy, when they're all on that same plane, at that time, at that alignment, the guy up here, as he's coming around, and coming from night into day, he can see the sunrise and the moonrise at the same time, okay? So this guy, as he's going away from the daylight into the uh, night, the same thing. They say that he can see, I'll put it this way now, so they say the new moon sets with the sun, okay? So as he's coming, spinning around, see right there? His moon is already set. The sun is still up in the sky because for this guy, he can't see anything over here. All he's seeing is down here. All right, so same principle because if you want me to use a big old sun like that, well now the moon's already gone and then hours will go by before he sees the sunset. Look, 
by the time he sees the sunset, dude's already way over here in the dark. He's seeing the sunset when he's four hours into nighttime, you know? So here's what we know. What we know is in the sky, looking from Earth, the moon and the sun are the exact same angular size. They both are a half degree in angular size. All right, that's what we know. You can believe a story that the, the sun is huge, it's 400 times bigger than the moon, and 400 times farther away. That's fine if you want to believe that. But for the purposes I'm doing this, they have to be the same size because they are the same angular size in the sky, number one. And number two, you've also got to believe that that little moon is going to totally block out that huge sun. It can. But if the sun's the same angular size, then it can. So this is the size we have to use for everything that I'm going to be going through. Oh, and I forgot to mention another one. If we use the huge sun that they always show in their diagrams, when dude at high noon looks up into the sky, his entire field of view would be nothing but sun. Okay, and using a bigger sun just makes your argument weaker and mine stronger.